It's all about what's in front of you. Vince, how big of a hit did the Clippers take in Los Angeles by not even making it to meet the Lakers to the conference finals? Well, well first of all, I hear you, Kuz. You're saying the right thing, but I think it's a big hit, uh, obviously, to the Clippers. The Lakers did what they're supposed to do, and they were waiting for the, the, the matchup. And, you know, it was disappointing. They didn't play well. They didn't defend well. Um, and and it just, they just didn't get it done. Yeah, no, I agree. But I, look, Vince, you're saying that he's saying what he's supposed to, but let's be really honest. The Lakers are never worried about what the Clippers are doing, right? The Clippers have okay. too much going on, too much stuff. And it's true, when you're on these championship runs, it's not like, hey, we want to fight. I would have loved for the Golden State Warriors to have lost to Oklahoma City. <laughs> like, I, I don't care about any of that. How, how mad are you that you're not facing the the, uh, the Warriors? I was ex I would be ecstatic, but that's the reality. So they're not worried but that, quick, that they didn't get the Clippers. <laughs> that they didn't get the Clippers. Hey, I, just want to, I just want to say this. The only thing to it is that it was so much hype around it, and they're saying now, all of a sudden, before they play the game, they're saying, hey, the Clippers are better than the Lakers. They're going to win it. So, of course, you know in LeBron, like you said, they don't care. But at the same time, if we beat the Clippers to go on to the finals, what are you going to say then? It's Bring about winning a championship. It don't, it don't matter. Absolutely. It's about winning a championship yeah, they still and getting there. Because you know what? If they the still want to beat a little brother. Again, but if the Lakers would have lost, then the Clippers would have been, they would have been laughing and all the memes and all the Patrick Beverly's and it's like, you of know, course. blah, blah, blah. They couldn't even get of here. Course. So the Lakers in their 29 championships don't really care about what the Clippers are doing, unfortunately. Well, look, I will say, right, the Clippers <laughs> have that marketing slogan, streetlights over spotlights, you know, earn, mm. not give in, that sort of thing, that were all direct shots at the Lakers. And I just think can you can't be the little brother and not make it and take shots. All right, no. coming up, we're going to talk about Bradley Beal not making All-NBA. Did he get snubbed? We'll discuss. Hey, talent. It took, like, Phil Jackson is very, very tactical and smart. He bounced around when the talent was there and showed up and just dominated the way only Phil Jackson could. He won. <laughs> Red Auerbach gets a shout in there, too, somewhere. Just shout then. out. Shout out, Celtics. All yeah. right. It's time yeah. for the return of, oh, yes, cue that music as the Kings turn. Last time we checked in with our heroes, they were in search of a new general manager. Well, today, they said they have their leading man. Rockets assistant GM Monty McNair will fill the post. So, Richard, given that McNair is coming from the Rockets, do you expect a more analytics-based approach to come to the Kings going forward? Yes, I, I do. I, I, I see that. I'm glad that he he jumped off that Houston oh, okay. rocket ship real quick. He got up out <laughs> of there. Heard. I'm joking. I'm joking. But really and truly, I think that that's what they're going to do. Hopefully they can get this franchise back moving because I know this and Vince knows this. When Sacramento is buzzing, that is a great place to play. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and look, Joe Dumars is also going to be a chief strategy officer there, so they have their management team in place. All right, guys, Bradley Beal averaged 30 and a half points per game this season and yet did not make an All-NBA team. That is the third most points per game in a season without making an All-NBA team. So it's happened before to at least a couple other guys. But, Richard, there has been an outcry. How could Bradley Beal not make it? Well, if you put him on, you got to take someone off. So who would you take off if you had to put Beal on? Or would you put Beal on and take someone off? Now, Bradley Beal is amazing. But let me say this. Absolutely nobody I would take off. Look, Bradley, when you signed that contract, no different than we criticized Carmelo for re-signing with the Knicks and not going to Chicago because he knew the Knicks were going to be bad. When you're going to sign that big contract, you know you're going to miss out on playoffs and accolades. So you can't be upset. You got the money and you performed. You did your part, but you knew that that team was going to be subpar. So you can't be mad that you're not getting the accolades. You barely made the the all-star game even though you deserved it because you signed and took the money with the sub bar team you got to live with that decision so it's safe to say that Siakam let's use him for example got in because his team was better not mm -hmm. because of the well, numbers. Well, that is something that, that you voters gotta judge. I'm a voter and, and I definitely take in the team's record into account. Maybe. Let's take a look at this week's signature style brought to you by Zales. Bam Adebayo, Kawhi Leonard, Jimmy Butler, Paul George, all featured here. Richard, how much do you guys do you think the guys care about the wardrobe right now? They do not cuz I have cared less and less and less about my wardrobe while I am here. So <laughs> I am I am not surprised at these guys. But look, look, they're they're bubble chic is what we call it. Bubble chic. That's what we're calling it. Yeah, that's what we're calling it. Bubble chic. Hey, I love hey, the Paul George boat thing. You know that. 
Yeah, it sure is. All right, gentlemen, I want to take a look back. Quick recap from a great game one of the Eastern Conference Finals. Take a look. It's going to be a dogfight. You know, we both have great opportunities in front of us. And, you know, we both won it, so it's going to be a war. I ain't forgot. They said I remember the talk. I'm getting bread, so what you thought? The way I'm on the way. Got it, Jimmy Buckets. Another five minutes of play. The step back. Kemba Walker giving Boston the lead. Into traffic. Got it. And one. Jimmy Butler delivering. And they get it done at the defensive end. Blocked at the rim by Bam. Not in my house. The Heat win game one. That's why he's the hardest hole of our team. Right there. I seen a lot, did a lot. I ain't forgot. So Kemba Walker shot 6 for 19 in this loss, and he was pretty tough on himself after the game. Quote, I'm just playing terrible, to be honest, he said. He said, there's not much more I can say. I just got to be better. I got to do it for this team on both ends of the floor. I have to make better decisions, and I have to make better shots overall. Vince, what's your prescription for how the Celtics can get Kemba going tonight? Well, if I'm the Celtics and Brad Stevens, I'm going to throw him a bone early. Uh, you know, typically... Uh, coaches strip out four or five plays that they want to run, whether they want to see how the defense is playing a, a pick and roll or, 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 or guarding a player. I want to I get Kimba the ball early, get him going, not even making a shot. I just want to make sure he has the ball and he's making plays and getting six for 19 out of his head. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I agree, Vince. You want to get him going. The, w the difference is for a guy like Kimba, it's not like you can throw a post play. You can't throw a backdoor right. lob. So a lot of the shots that he was missing were three pointers. And so like he did good from inside the arc. He was five for 10. But then all of a sudden it's that one for nine from three. And a lot of them are shots that he normally makes. The one thing that I would say is less about them and more about uh, Kimba trying to focus on something else. Like, hey, I want to go into halftime with five rebounds, like count your rebounds. If that takes you out of counting your misses because if you go 0 for 1, 0 for 2, you start getting in your head. If you're counting something else, then your game just starts to naturally flow. So that's just kind of how, you know, I I've seen players get out of just well, focusing on their three-point shot. Correct. Well, and then like you said, RJ, he had success shooting in, in mid-range and, mm -hmm. and getting in the paint and creating the double team with the big. So now I'm putting in the, put him in a pick and roll where he can either get to that, that elbow jump shot or get a mismatch with a big where he can get in the lane, penetrate, either get fouled or make a play for somewhere else. So work your way, score in, work your way in, and work your way back out once you're feeling good and warm and comfortable with your, your shot. It was encouraging to me, guys, that although he didn't shoot well from deep right. for most of the game, he had that great, huge, big shot toward the end of the game. So his mm -hmm. confidence still was there. He was able to yeah, go back to the well. Yeah, and he's definitely capable. Yeah, mm -hmm. we absolutely. Jalen Brown said he wanted to get Kemba more catch-and-shoot threes. Do you like that idea? What do you think, Vince? Absolutely. I, like I said, just you, whatever works, I, whatever makes him feel comfortable. I, catch and shoot. I, I think him having the ball in his hands early, just trying to make plays and figuring out is 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 the remedy, and and then you can go from there. So if the mid range is not working, put him off the ball. Like I said, let catch and shoot. Maybe get the ball mm -hmm. on the second side and just beat somebody and get a layup. And, and one last thing, it's the way Kimba Walker has also had to defend o o on the other end. That can also affect, yeah. they've been using him as like back, uh, his man, whoever is guarding him, back screening, and then they're taking Kimba into the post. We saw it with Jimmy Butler. We saw it with Jay Crowder. So that starts to get into your head too. So I'm, I'm really interested to see how Brad Stevens is going to change that kind of defensive matchup so you're not putting Kimba in a spot where he just is not in a good place to play defense. Well, I did ask Brad Stevens, have you and Kemba had a conversation, just check in with him mentally? And he goes, Kemba's just always so happy and positive. I said, hey, you doing all right? And he said,